Hi YouTube, my name is Matthew from Tombi Patsyonde. In my last videos I showed you something with my new gear, the Jazz Mutant Gleamer, which is really great. But in this video I want to show you how you can perform Ableton Live live with a simple USB keyboard. That's actually the way I did it with a friend in the project called Proton 303. Um, we got some awesome parties here playing our music live and I will play a little set and tell you about how these controls are arranged later at the end of the video. So enjoy.
So routing your patterns um, from your keyboard is very easy with live. You just click on MIDI and then you can go on a special pattern and press um, some kind of um, key and you got it. Next time you press the key um, and go out of MIDI and then he's playing that. Um, arranging those keys in your controls, um, you might think about that you get no visual feedback and so I do it in groups. So normally I've got here uh, um, 303. Wait, it's coming. Another variation of that track and here's stop. So I try to make uh, little groups and here's another um, 303 and here's the main beat for instance, and I've got variations, and at the end of the group I got pattern stop. I know many people are doing it with tapes and tape their keyboard, but um, I have different live sets and so taping would not be so, um, so good. But I made uh, some kind of sheet where I write down if I built the live set. It's not for... Uh, um, it's not that in a live situation you look at it, you're not going to do that, but if you build your live set and write it down, it's always better. And also if you maybe exercise a little bit before or something like that. Um, also, I keep this uh, key here for stop all pattern, because if you got different patterns running in the groups, here's a pad, for instance, and, and then you or the, just jump to the scene. And now I want to jump to only uh, 303. So I just, it's in time, I just stopped all pattern and jumped there. Um, these three uh, buttons I had for some scenes to jump in. This is a break scene. This is normal all. With a pad and very relaxed. A break scene. And here, another break, a more ambient break, nearly. Um, having those panic scenes is very nice. Because, um, yeah, you, you get maybe lost, uh, something running, and then you want to jump in a different scene, in a, in a special scene, and then it's really good if you get um, these scenes, um, some special scenes. So if you don't have buttons like that, you can do it here, for instance. And although um, there's one more thing I want to say, um, if you rooted uh, the patterns to your keyboard, try to do it two octaves higher or maybe um, two oct uh, octaves down, because maybe you want to play in the bass line later on, or you're just working on your love set and want to play in something, and then your patterns also start. Um, yeah, with the, um, with the knobs, I guess you have your own ideas uh, what to do. I always like um, having um, a filter. This one is a high pass filter because um, this is a sample 303 instead of the other one. Oh. I hope you see it, yeah. And the delay, and you can make funny things of that, especially in a live situation. This works really good. And try to keep your live set a little bit simple. Don't make it too complex because, yeah, it, it works also if it's not too complex and you don't get uh, too much loss. Also, I very rarely use um, these for volume slides because. Um, Volume slides are dangerous in a live situation, even if, if it's a beat. Um, so yeah, I don't activate it as a volume slide. You might get too high uh, with the volume or too low. It's very, yeah, let's nearly say dangerous in a live situation to, to mix also. So I only do it on kinds like this, which isn't so critical. You know. So well, these were just a few tips. Um, I'm doing this because I see many nice videos here and um, yeah, I hope you get some things for your own ideas and thank you for watching.